I come to tell you a secret. One that means more than words, but yes, but more than you've been preconditioned to think. One that will reset the nightmare count in my dreams, but I promise you'll lose no less sleep. Unless you sit back and really listen. For years, just listen. Don't say one judgment and understand what this all means for me. This is a journey of yourself. Self and the spoken word. The guys usually come tight, but the women use that night to vent on how men did the wrong, how daddy was always gone, and how their heart now belongs to this broken template of what love should have been. But then again, when the jazz starts to play, and you're feeling what the artist is saying, does it really matter what's being said? The soul food being fed can fill in one's appetite for strength and power. And even those in their deepest hour can share their words with your mind. And you compare their words to my words, to their words, to try to find a better way to free all these emotions you want to say. In a more creative yet innovative way, so when you embrace the mic on a future day, the audience can see how you've advanced to the next phase in your writing skills. If you have to prove that you can stand and be respected for your literary expertise, while still relating to the deep at heart, but letting them know that a major part of who you are, who you like to be, who they will stand and see as we, is poetically, intellectually, theoretically inclined. Self and the child of the past. Those shall support checks were the only reminder of you we had. And they stopped coming when I turned six. But unfortunately, I had your sinful eyes, check. Your mellow complexion, check. Your deceptive smile, check. And your narrow mind, check. And I continue to remind Mama of your departure, your exit, and your stoic demeanor towards our survival. And the support you never sent made my life's existence an accident. And the support she didn't see was debited from the support given to me. Check. Self in the barbershop. Ah. Status means nothing, and it falls voluntarily like the hair to the ground, at least it should, in this shop, the barbershop, where we can share unrestrained, uncontained thoughts without being judged, convicted, or tag confused in this world that's so quick to. See, I grow here. I realize my place and connect in a familiar space while shaving my face. And in this place, we celebrate the luxuries of being what we are, not what has happened to us, not how the media portrays us, not the fathers who fathered us, but what we aspire us to be, and how little things done subconsciously, like conversation, like connectivity, like consolation, and a haircut can mean so much. For the moment, this time has finally come for me to take the same deep breath that filled the lungs of Adam in his final nights alone in the garden. Inside the same first size, how size when he is first cut from the cord into a new life? And actually, this great question. Self and love in the big city. I took this camera to capture you in the city. These towers will fall down for your beauty. This I had to preserve. Here, we're in Bryant Park. In this photo, we're along the South Street Seaport. Here at the center of Times Square as if the world was watching us, and we truly believed they were. As the sun set over the Hudson River Valley, I stood you right here for this photo on Union Square to capture the Empire State Building in the distance. The tower's floodlights were lit green, the same green of the traffic lights leading uptown as you reached from my hands and my camera. So I could shoot this video footage of you here and, and here, of you running up Broadway toward passing 17th, 18th, and 19th streets. I knew then that I'd be willing to go past the squares through the Valdep Valley, up to the heights to chase you with my love, laughing at a playful, newfound joy, and capturing picture in picture with every step. I see your footsteps all over Facebook. I watch your coattails over Twitter. You've abandoned me in this wired world. Every day, over and over again, I watch you leave. I place my claws into the Earth's skin and pull gravity close to me and beg you to stay. Self and rejection. I revisit my second thoughts, reprising them a third, a fourth, and then a fifth time. My God, things make less sense now than when they did not make sense before. You become less of a liar. 
and more of a full service concierge of pain than this broken heart can bear to believe. But see, it's only when I reconceive those moments that no second thoughts were made. Are your horns unconcealed? And that avalanche tears into my chest, extracts that religion out of my soul, and hands me my body back, like this sack of abandoned skeletal bones. My heart must reject even the blood that it pumps to breathe as I stumble into the streets for air, or sirens, or God, whichever one rescues me first. And while my eyes have led me down winding roads, along railways and onto flights, too often have I left my instincts to be educated by wolves, believing I could walk on life's most turbulent waters armed with just a substitute for love. <coughs> Self and redemption. Death has already been promised, sealed into our foreheads, tucked into our future plans. And the same of pain, the same of sadness, and navigating with no sensing direction. The same of loneliness, the same of emptiness, and suffocating with no wincing reaction. But in that same gospel, peace has already been promised. The same of love, same of joy, and laughing aloud with no elating sources. The same of worship, the same of praise, and surrendering to life's wearing courses. But when that day the sun perfectly positions itself for the hours to step over themselves with extra care, and the children will be safe, and the strangers will all speak, and each person in our lives will reach out to us in this harmonized rhythm of rainbows to cap love across the sky. We'll wander in this teary-eyed bliss with no place to go, and we'll enjoy that prelude to heaven. Self and home. Face like sweet potato pies full of Auburn Avenue's history. Face like civil rights movements, civil wars with battles for equality. Face like stone mounts and grave, remember that the, those southern cultures will arise in a face like hot kitchen ovens, two hot summers to play outside. See, America, that's my legacy. But Georgia, that's my family. Red dirt held this life sown. Atlanta, Georgia is my home. Face like Harlem's thrills, West End cooks up cultural flavors. Face like Beverly Hills, Buckhead strips crews, expensive savers. Face like Centennial Olympics, venues and parks remind of those glorious days in a face like Phoenix from Ashton, a risen fires as marks the rays. See, America, that's my ideology, but Georgia is my civility. With Southern hospitality and flesh and bones, Atlanta is my home. Face like congestion, traffic stacking, frustration around the highway curves. Faces like Moses following churches find figures in the highest reserves. Face like corruption, our political leaders will secure their destinies, and they face like high-rising buildings, success sliding in reach for all of our families. See, America, that's my matter rhythm, but Georgia is my biorhythm. Southern wombs carried me too long. Red dirt held his life sown. I'm up an outcast on my way home. Atlanta is my home. Thank you. Woo!